First call, Amalfi itself, the coast's brightest star. Mythology has it that Hercules built it on the spot where his beloved Amalfi was buried. He gave it her name. With such a splendid history, Amalfi is rich in ecclesiastical architecture. The cathedral is magnificent. You can see here how narrow the coastal road is, and it twists and turns all the time. The biggest hazard, though, is concentrating on your driving without being distracted by the view. I'm driving into Positano here, and you can see what I mean. The most important ally you've got is the car horn. Just keep tooting. What do you think of Positano, then? Just look at it. Houses stuck to the slope, one above the other as if they're somehow helping each other climb up the hillside. The car I'm driving, by the way, is extra to the cost of the holiday. Well, do take care, because it's a very tricky road. But my word, what a drive. An absolute delight around every corner. You can understand, can't you, why Positano, pink and white and blue, has attracted painters? It's a bit of a jet-set place, too. Zeffirelli has a house here. And the white one on the left is Sophia Lorenz. But let's do another trip over the mountains, towards Naples, where the volcano Vesuvius towers above the Roman city it buried, Pompeii. The lava and the ash came so suddenly, its inhabitants were petrified forever. There is a haunting atmosphere in Pompeii. Streets are clearly visible, stepping stones to fit the wheels of chariots, and drawings, most of them on the subject of fertility, and some of them very forthright indeed. I, uh, I really can't tell you what's going on in there. You'll have to come and see for yourself. It's really rather rude. Real remnants of Roman life. This was a bar where drinks were served. Salute. Time to leave, I felt, but in the house of the labyrinth, an original mosaic, how to get out? Come si esce di qui. Come si esce di qui. How the hell did you get out of here? Well, I nipped over a few hedges and was back in Ravello for lunch at the Caruso Hotel. Yes, they're distant relatives of the great tenor himself. And while you're fantasizing about the fish and the pasta and your summer holiday, let me tell you that there are not many hotel or apartment beds in Ravello, so even when they're full, the place is never that crowded. And wherever you go, there always seems to be that stupendous romantic view. If you fancy a rest from driving like Nigel Mansell, take a bus and smile at the problems of the other car drivers. Nobody argues with buses on the Costiera Amalfitana. They just back off. Grazie. Take the bus to Atrani, very near to Ravello. Perfect for a day at the seaside. But it's not just the sea, though that's pretty enough. Look at this. Go to the little square and watch the people. Try and spot the British tourists. Sometimes, given all this hand waving, it really makes you wonder whether you need to learn the language at all. Not exactly Pavarotti, is it? But then it's not meant to be. No charge, just let your hair down and belt out a few of your Neapolitan favourites. The band, of instruments homemade, it seems mostly, they're doing it for fun too. They just love singing round here. Costiera Amalfitana. How did it come to be? 
No town planner had a hand in this. It just happened gloriously, and we should be thankful. And if you don't come back with at least a dozen shots of this view in your camera, I'll be astonished. That Magic of Italy holiday costs from £262 per person for 14 nights, and that's based on four people sharing a self-catering apartment with a sea view, and including the return flight from Gatwick or Luton. Question, how much do you wear on holiday? Well, in Italy, the judges can't decide where to draw the line. Cathy, how much of your swimming costume do you pack? Well, it can be confusing. Surprisingly, women can't go topless in Risque Rio, officially at least. In Acapulco, though, you can, officially, but no one does because you'd probably be treated as an object of ridicule. On the Indonesian island of Lombok, next to Liberal Bali, take care. Tourists have even been stoned for stripping off. In the Maldives, it's kneecaps that get them flustered, so you better cover up those knees before you enter a town. In Monaco, the police will find nudists on the spot, so you have to think of somewhere to keep your money. And if you want to let it all hang out in the laid-back states, be careful. There are only six nudist beaches in the whole of the USA. In Greenland, however, we can announce that nude bathing is perfectly legal, although not necessarily enjoyable. And a final important warning. Flared trousers are illegal, illegal in Malawi. So, Frank, I'm afraid your paisley patterned bell-bottoms are going to have to stay at home. They will come back. They will come back. But, of course, obviously, the general rule has to be respect the customs of the country you visit, even if you're only there for a few hours. Well, Bill Buckley found that on just one holiday, the sartorial rules can range from the bare minimum to the positively dressy, taking in Arab jalabas along the way. He joined an Italian liner on a cruise in and out of the Mediterranean, visiting six cities, but starting and finishing in Genoa. It's a floating cosmopolitan holiday camp come nightclub in which the older saga holidaymakers can get acquainted with people of all ages. There's no denying it, cruises have kudos. Mention you're taking this kind of holiday and the eyebrows shoot up. The ship's like a small, densely populated town. The passengers cram together closer than on any down-market Spanish beach and sometimes have to evict squatters from their reserved and paid-for deck chairs. Anyone, any age can go cruising, but you've got to be gregarious. One of the first things you notice is that the passengers and crew are predominantly Italian. And that's probably why the atmosphere on ship is very relaxed and informal. Of course, the Italians have none of our typical British reserve. They're on their holiday and they are jolly well going to enjoy it. Cruises don't have to be stuffy. The deck games were very popular, with the honour of half a dozen or so nations at stake. Now, don't worry, they aren't saving a drowning sleepwalker, nor is this gentleman at the centre of an orgy. It's actually a relay race with the nightshirt in place of a baton. Funny to think that a few days ago, these people hadn't even met. Now they're two fiercely competitive teams. Eventually, it appeared that one team had sort of won, but I'm afraid it was another sad day for British sport. The UK wasn't even represented. Well, we're a little bit too old for that, I think, but we're enjoying ourselves otherwise, watching. We well, should have been running for Britain. Uh, yeah. I'm not the Olympic type. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we wanted to see a, n a number of different places in the short time, and this seems to be the ideal holiday. What do you make of it so far? I'm enjoying it very much. Any complaints? Nope. Sure, you can be honest with me yes. there. We're going further. No. <laughs> no, it's very nice, like the sunshine. If you haven't got to know people by day two, there's a fancy dress party, cunningly disguised as a compulsory fire drill to help you break the ice. Could have done with a few more drinks to get it going now. So could the captain's cocktail party that evening. What a letdown. I queued in a crowded corridor for half an hour with my saga friends, Nell and Connie Bennett. Then it was a brief hello to the ever-smiling captain, a quick picture, a scramble for one of the few remaining seats, and one very small drink, while the captain said hello to us in four languages. Benvenuti. Madame, Monsieur, bienvenue. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. One dance and that was it. 
Saga threw their own party a few days later, which was a hundred times better. More space, more cocktails, and more captain. He actually had time to talk. After a day at sea, we've arrived at our next destination. And here is a very, very big clue as to where we are. Yes, you've guessed it, of course. Bognor Regis. Now, actually, this really is Rick's Bar in Casablanca. Not the original, I'm afraid, although there really was one, now long since demolished. This one was built on the site as part of the Casablanca Hyatt Regency Hotel. Very ritzy. Certainly no gin joint like the original. Morocco is one of those places where the old and the new don't just meet, they collide head on. A visit to the Casbah is, of course, obligatory. Personally, I find bartering embarrassing, but you could hardly come home and hold your head up if you hadn't had a haggle. Um, how much is that? 150. 150, yeah. yeah. I think that is too much. How much you give me? How much give you give you this place? You. 75. 75. Give me 150, okay? 100 this place. Um, 90. Yeah. 90? Yeah. 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 Okay. Do you, take, do you take credit cards? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. See what I mean about the old and the new? After half a day in Casablanca, back on the road to Rabat. No service stations, but if you want, you can buy a drink. You're given a guided tour of the mausoleum where Mohammed V lies, the adored king who led the country to independence. The mausoleum takes after 16 years to construction. Inside, we're going to see at the beautiful walk. Sadly, no cameras are allowed inside the building, not even a pocket in Stomatic. It may look old, but actually it was completed just 15 years ago. At dusk, the Royal Guard lower the national flag. You also see the Royal Palace and Mosque. What a fascinating country. And how agonizing to have just a few hours there before rushing back to ship for dinner. You don't have to dress for dinner, but somehow, when you're on a cruise ship, it seems right to do things with a touch of style. Uh, there's a wide range of accommodation on the ship, but this is the sort of cabin that most Saga holidaymakers go for. As you can see, there are two single beds, and up here there's a third bunk which folds down if you need it. Reasonable amount of storage space for your clothes over there, and in here you've got your own private shower room. Dinner consists of ten courses, but you're not obliged to sample all of them. The quality of food ranged from absolutely mouth-watering to instantly forgettable. Service, however, was always first-rate. Virtually everything you do, on or off ship, is photographed. No wonder Greta Garbo didn't show up. And you can buy copies of the snaps you want. One of the most impressive features of this cruise was the standard of entertainment. All the acts were terrific and there was plenty of variety. Yes, well, it was a very hot night. I must say, I never knew posh people played games like this, but they absolutely love it. How about this? Bingo in four languages. If I win, I shan't know whether to shout house, hauser, maison or casa. I can't wait for him to do 88. What do you think he'll say? Spy, fat senora? Actually, the prize tonight is well worth winning. It, believe it or not, it's 700,000 lira. Mind you, that would pay for half your holiday. Next stop, Tenerife, and the House of Balconies at La Oratava. It dates from 1632, and inside you can buy beautiful lacework, if, that is, you've got the money. And how much would a cloth like this be? This is spray. How much does this cost? This is 20,000. Oh, 20, uh, That's, what, about 100 pounds? You could probably pick up something cheaper at the quayside. Wherever the ship docks, a cluster of traders springs up. I left the ship at Tenerife on its way to Funchal, Malaga and Genoa. 
The cruise had a nice blend of passengers, honeymoon couples, families with young kids and older people like the Saga contingent, who were, incidentally, the only Brits on board. It wasn't a perfect cruise, but it was jolly good value for money, and Morocco was magic. That Saga cruise cost from £749 per person for ten nights, very full board, on the Eugenio Costa. The price is based on two people sharing a twin bed cabin with shower and WC. It also includes a return scheduled flight from Heathrow to Nice and transfer by coach to the ship at Genoa. And all the entertainment on board comes free. But as Bill found, it's still handy to have one or more of these. Credit cards are increasingly popular all over the world, and in America they're really as essential as bikini tops nowadays. But one of our viewers, Mr Hubbard of Ashford, wrote to us to say that using plastic's not as carefree as Alan Wicker's ads might suggest. When he got home, he found his next credit card bill included over a thousand pounds worth of debits he knew nothing about. Now, the press says the equivalent of one great train robbery per month is stolen from British cardholders. But fraud has halved over the last five years. The credit card companies have got fraud squads of their own, and they keep all vouchers on microfilm for about ten years so that any problems can be checked. But that's small consolation to Mr Hubbard, who's still struggling to sort out his bill. Well, this is the company's advice. Never let the card out of your sight. Treat it like cash. Check all the details on the vouchers before signing. By the way, a couple of our viewers could have avoided their problems if they'd done just that. And keep your copy of the voucher and make sure all the carbons are destroyed. We're now to something even more serious than money, health. And full marks to the DHSS. They produce new and much improved leaflets on looking after your health abroad. This one has an application for the elusive form E111, which enables you to get free emergency medical care in the EEC. They're simply called before you go and while you're away. And you can get them from the DHSS or with our fact sheet, which, of course, by now you ought to know the address for. But anyway, here it is again. Send a larger stamped, a larger stamped address envelope with a 24 pence stamp, if you want these leaflets, to fact sheet number 7, Holiday 88, BBC Television, London, W12, HQT. And it's on CFAX page 187. And we've had uh, letters, lots of letters from viewers who had long waits to get their full British passports. In some cases, a wait of up to 19 weeks. So the question is, is it already too late to apply for this summer? Well, not quite, but the passport service is in a right old mess. So much so that they've had to bring in emergency regulations. Now, the changes are these. Some countries, including the United States, have agreed that full British passports which are uncancelled and have expired for less than five years will be recognised as valid. Also, all the countries marked in yellow on this map will now accept British visitors' passports, which you can get at any main post office over the counter. And as you can see, that includes Western Europe and the United States. If you must have a full passport within five to six weeks, then send your application to Newport or Liverpool, where there's less of a backlog. Travel agents have all the details on Prestel. Now, after our 20th birthday season, all our passports are looking a little bit dog-eared. It's been a long haul. When you add it all up, the Holiday 88 team, camera crews included, have travelled nearly a million miles. And lots of you have written to us to say which were your favourite moments, so we've put them together for one last kind of whirlwind trip. Afraid there are other bits that none of us here in this team are looking forward to very much, the front of camera team, the embarrassing moments we hoped you wouldn't see. But first of all, an invitation, come on our voyage. Voyage, voyage. This is a terrific ride. I really hate it. No, you probably didn't notice that I was a bit nervous when I got into this thing because I'm quite good at seeing it. Straight past my lip. Of course, I've already uh, I've forgotten it. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you're already in Scandinavia. 
was in it to be Denmark or Scandinavia. Or Scandinavia, wasn't it? I'll carry on, I'll carry on, I'll carry on. Every Saturday and Sunday, and public holidays too, we come down and we patrol the beach so that anyone that gets into uh, difficulties in the surf, well, it's our job to get out there and rescue them. The water really is still very cold. where the living goddess is closeted. It may be a hole in the ground, but at least it's private. Salute. <laughs> What, your nice little welcome drink? Like no alcohol. No rum, no, it no. looks really dangerous. <laughs> you. you know something? Bath water is a very good description. Flip a frog in France, are you sure? Oops, try again. Um, a half a, uh, half a D of this. Yes. To a certain soft tone, you eloquence. And a style that's almost all your own. In Rimini, you've got the knack of being so laid back. It was the hippies of the 60s who, of course, were the first tourists to Nepal. They used to come and sit on the shivas. Not bad, eh? Around the world in five minutes. Well, soon you'll be getting ready for the summer, and after recent years, we really deserve a good one, don't we? We certainly do. We'll need one because we'll be gathering reports on the holidays you want to see and keeping an eye on developments in the travel trade, too. We hope we've helped you to enjoy yourself a little bit more in 88, whether choosing a holiday or just sitting and dreaming at home. And even in the bleakness of next January, don't despair. As the poet Shelley, no mean traveller himself, might have said, if winter comes... Can holiday 89 be very far behind? From holiday 88, goodbye. goodbye oh, just before you go, every moment the sun is setting somewhere in the world. Maybe you'll be looking at scenes like these for real in the months ahead. So as the holiday 88 team heads into the sunset, till we meet again, we wish you a lovely summer, whatever you are. Make a date in your diary to tune in and let a little sunshine into your living room next year. Thank you.